Okay, we had a gentleman here, and um, I think he would do the best honors to introduce himself. <clears throat> well, my name is Earl Bugs Nelson. Came to Canada in 1969, November. As a kid, I played high school soccer in Jamaica with um, Calabar High School. We played in the local competition called the Manning Cup. I played three years uh, as a central defender and was the captain of the school team. Uh, coming to Canada, I didn't really know a lot of people from West Indies. Um, I heard about Chubby, Ivan Cook. Um, I played against Derek Samuels in minor league, which is an under 17 competition. I played for my neighborhood community, which was called Pembroke Hall. And Sammy played the Golden, Golden Aces. So when I came to Toronto, I went to live with my sister's school friend, whose name was Never Glanville. And at that time, he was a part of West Indies. So I dropped right into West Indies as a kid, as a teenager. So you know, your, your organization was formed already or were you part of the form? Well, there was a team called West Indies, but in about 70, Glanville took it over and brought in Tom Sosa. Okay, who you took it over from? Um, I, I, I'm not aware. I, okay. I, didn't, I didn't know the people at the time. Okay. But basically, I was born in West Indies. And as a kid, you know, once you get to a team, it was a good team with a lot of good players, Lassels Dunkley, Hercule Vaz, Glanville, it was quite a few. So as a, as a teenager, me and Sammy hooked up as friends. And, you know, we were playing well, training well, but couldn't crack the team for a while. So over the next two years, we got our breaks and we took it. And what, year, what year was that? 72, 71, 72, we got into the, the squad, the first team squad. Because at that time, West Indies had two teams. We had about 45, 50 players. So the competition was very, very, very stiff. And it was a hard team to get into. But, you know, when you're young, your energy levels are high. And we had a little bit of skill, too. And 73, I got hurt. I, To be honest with you, Mr. McGill, I'm not sure if I could have cracked that team. Well, that's but, what I'm now going to ask you. So, I guess I you, know, you were willing to wait knowing that there was quality players Ahead of me. So yes. you wasn't disenchanted or waiting no, or anything no, like that because you no. knew there was quality there. Yeah, I had no choice because that was my, my life at the time. So 73, I got into the squad, but then I got hurt. And I had to watch West Indies win the Ontario Cup. Oh, you didn't play in that game? No, I was hurt at the time. Okay, but you, were you a part of the team? Yes. On, you, so you were on injury list, kind of? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so how, how, I mean, it's a bittersweet thing. So give me your whole um, experience, that bittersweet experience, watching the team. How did, how you, did you see them winning? Um, because according to Sam, you played some serious teams there. Did yes, you call the games who you played, how you progressed? We did. Um, I, I remember one particular game, which was against a team named San Feely, down at an um, exhibition stadium at the time. And... We, we put it to them because, you know, the, the team we had had a lot of, you know, like Arthur Kiar, Dunkley, Lloyd Brown, Kaya, Chubby, Bertis Bell. Um, Bertis was in the Ontario Cup team? Oh, yeah. Okay. So it was kind of, you know, as a defender, and Roddy Friars too was playing Earl Four, Keith Four. So that team, Carl Martin, that team was was stacked. So like you say, I, I had to wait my time, you know. And the, the good thing about that squad, Midget, is if somebody gets hurt, you can't get back again. Because oh. the person who take your game going to get stuck there for a while. 
And we won that to 74. We went to Trinidad to play a couple of games. Uh, we played... Um, in, How was that? How you remember the teams you played? and we played um, Point 14 All-Stars. We played in Puerto Spain. We played in Skinner Park. We played a team named Malvern. We we did quite well. The team in, in the toughest team we met was the team in point fourteen with, with um Cave and Hackett. But we played on a pitch that was almost full of oil at the time. I, I never forget that. And we played well, you know. But that, that team was a good team. Really good team. There was a guy named Cave. I never forget him. Yeah. Him, him stepped in a chubby foot. Chubby had to come off. But you see, Chubby was a man who liked to hold the ball and do a lot of stuff. But that was the toughest game we played. And the funny thing is after the game, them, them bring three cases of carry beer and give us to drink. <laughs> But, you know, it, it, it was a good experience. We were there for about 28 days. And it was a wonderful experience. Ju you know, like the team, Junior Parker, Alan Mooney's. You know, was, was Junior playing or he was in the coaching staff? Junior, Junior was playing at the time. Okay. He was playing an assistant coach because Dunkley was the coach. And we, we trained in the Savannah. What we did, we split the team um, some guys stayed in Belmont and some stayed up with Alan Mooney's. You know, I can't remember the name of the place. But every morning at six, we would go to the Savannah to train and drink coconut water. And then we walk down, go down the main street and hang out, come home, cook. Main we, street as in Frederick Street? Frederick Street, yes. We used to walk down Frederick Street, man. The whole, all, the entire squad. But as I say, it, it was a mind-opening experience, you know, to, to realize that there was good soccer being played all over the Caribbean at the time. And coming back to Toronto, we, we then I ran into you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but, so I'm now, I, I don't know how that was. Uh, uh, that was in the, in the, in the late 70s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I played against you in, um, I remember when the Street Guys League started on Oak, Oak, uh, Oakwood, Ronald formed a team called um, Glamour Boys, and it was yes. in Kumo. I remember, yes. that, I remember that day you gave me a mission. <laughs> <laughs> but then we, we also played in the, in the contrast, because um, the, the owner of contrast, Al Hamilton, gave us some money and there was a brother named Rupert Dash who was a referee and he was part of the, the bunch of people who started that contrast league and that again was a, was a really that league should have never stopped because that was a black league a strong black league yeah and, that 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 um, I was glad to hear you say that because that's why you're putting it into the the, the questions because um the the level in the contrast it was the cup. It was a, a knockout, but it was really high. Yes. Yes. And and in, in that league, if, if he didn't play in that league, he wasn't playing soccer in Toronto. Really. As, as, as a black team. As a as black, a black team. team, yes. yes. And, and once the contrast league died, then the street boys league was started. Yeah. You know, that, that was like an offshoot because... The problem was there was too many black soccer players around not to have a black league. And, and the Street Boys League continued the exodus and, and development of black soccer players over the years. And that league was really competitive and, and good. So, so Bugs, you, you actually used to, well, Sammy said he never came down that much, but you actually came down and watched games and stuff. I know West Indies wasn't in it. Besides coming in the Invitational late, that's late. I mean, early 18. I was there. I, I, I never missed a day. I never missed a day at the Street Boys League. It's all right. Soccer, you're a soccer midget. You know, and, and if you're a soccer player, you, you're going to follow good soccer. And so the community, I'm, and it was a lot of crowd too. Yes, and it was always jammed. 
And and you always had a Trinidadian section jamming down in the corner. So and half of West Indies was about a third of West Indies was Trinidadian players. Be, because the name West Indies epitomizes the Caribbean. We had players from Guyana, Barbados, St. Vincent, Trinidad, Jamaica. So we even had a, a guy from England played for us one time, a white guy named Wiley, who came from England and uh, the, the TND sent him to West Indies. He said he wanted a team that plays good football. And he came to West Indies and stayed with us for quite a while. He even played in contrast. He played in the contrast cup too. But but you know, it's 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 quite a, it's kind of refreshing. And even today, with the with the passing of the Street Boys League, which was very, very sad, because as Caribbean people, you know, we have to hang out, we have to have a line. And, and watch the good football. And that wasn't there. So over the years with West Indies, we, me and Sammy and PZ, we became the administrative part of West Indies. Once Glanville and Sosa and Juno Parker left, we, as youngsters, we took over the club and kept it going. And we put a team in the TND, we had a team in the Toronto District Soccer League. And was that the team, there was a little, Hitch or a little transformation in West Indies when the transformation is you incorporate it seemed like West Side with Shane and, and yes. Dexter and these guys. Well, we had two um, teams. It was two we teams West at that time? Indies, we had a West Indies A and a West Indies B. The West Indies B team was a bunch of youths that used to play up in North York, which was Dexter, Mothers, Shane. They, 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 they played on the 21 for a while. And then they won the league about three or four times and they, they refused their registration. So... When you say you refused your time. registration, what do you mean? They didn't want to play up? They didn't want us to play. Because we won or, the, or league. the league. The league, because, the league, because you were dominating the league. Yes, and in the TND you now we got into we had two teams again, A and B. Now the B team was all the kids with Maxi Dixon and Kuma Castle used to coach them. And we had an A team that played in the West. And we got into a fight in that, with that the A team. Made, that made news, yes. We got into a fight and they kicked us out of the league. And Donahue had a team in the Street Boys League. Yes. I, can't, I can't remember the name of it. West Side. West Side. No, it wasn't West Side. West Side was in the league, but Donahue had a team named Powerhouse. That was Donahue team with TC yes. and those guys? Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> Powerhouse had some players from West Indies and the bulk of West Indies went to West Side. So a couple of years went by and Donahue came to me and Billy Jack which is Ken Brown, and wanted us to restart West Indies. So we sent a letter to the TND and they accepted and we keep a little fundraising dance, pay them, and we was back in the in in the TND. So 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 the, the part of that um discipline was came with a fine and I guess that was the fine you paid. Yeah, so we paid that. Back into yeah. the TND. Yes. So well, that, that's in a, the fight, that, that is new information I'm getting there in terms of the going back in and Donahue being instrumental in making that happen. Yes, he was. And then, me, you know, me and Billy Jack take up the, the reins of the club. And even today, we're still there. That is what I, I want to get. Um, I want to say to you, and I was saying to Sammy early on, it's really good. You really, really are a real patriot of the West Indies United. It's in my blood. Yeah, yeah. You stayed there watching even in the Marwan situation. So we'll get into the Marwan thing. So I know let's deal with the, the you thing. How is the you thing in the Marwan? Last time I saw you, I had some pictures of you in an awards presentation with the Marwan Youth Club. You had, a, I think it was on the 17 or under 19 team that was playing up to somewhere called West Indies United again and that's 
That's yes. not that long ago. Well, what we did, we had an under 21. We started an under 21 team out of Malvern with um, Joshua Comrie and a lot of kids. And they did quite well. And Laza was really the coach of that team. I was the manager. And we sent them into the States. They played in a lot of showcase tournaments. <clears throat> and a couple of them got scholarships. To be honest with you, some of them, I don't think they really wanted to go to school. <clears throat> them just play ball. Okay. And when those kids grew up, <clears throat> we put them, they were playing in the TND for a while. And then we stopped the TND team because, because of different reasons. And West Indies as, as a unit joined up with Malvern, Scarborough National Malvern Soccer Club. And I became the rep director of Malvern and started another youth team. And these guys now, we, that team was sponsored by West Indies. So we, we I had them since they were under 10 and took them all the way to under 21. So, so you were in Malvern coaching the under 10. You, you were in Malvern then and, and, and came up with the idea to, to, to do the under 19, the under 19 or? That, that was the same team. They grew up, I, they grew up with me. So there we go again, ladies and gentlemen. He stayed with the team from under nine, under 10 to under 19. So I uh, just want you guys to get a little idea who we dealing with here. Okay. And, and those kids will, what I'm proud of is the fact that we had 24 kids and 22 of them went to college from that team. We, we won the regional under 21 league, got promoted to the provincial league. And I think that group still playing today. They, they actually was, they were playing in clearly as a team. We played, um, they played with league one and then I quit as a coach because, you know, I'm getting old, so. Older, 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 I'm getting older. Yeah, I took a break, I took a break, but that was the, actually the end of it. And actually I'm still a part of Malvern today, but because of the virus and, and the shutdown, we, we can't do much, but I'm still with West Indies as the president. I've been the president for quite a while. And myself, Ken Brown, Billy Jack, and Stones Johnson. Yeah, I want to mention those. We should give them a little shout out. Uh, this is the same committee that's also running West Indies United in the Masters League in Thompson Park, correct? Yes. yes. Caribbean Masters League. Yes. Now, Cedric Johnson, a.k.a. Stone, he, when I was around the Malvern, apparently he was working side by side with you at the time. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, so what, what happened that you decided to go in the math? You always had a team in the masters that's right, over the years. Yes. We started in the masters in, uh, 20 something years ago. Yeah. In the middle when it was done by Kennedy and, um, it was done by, um yes, yes. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. So, so the Billy, uh, um, between Billy and, and, and Stone, um, I guess you have the type of support to, to make you continue on. I mean, you say you're getting older, but um, how, how does the future look with, with, um, with bugs in it, in terms of well, these? I, I, it's hard for me to quit, Midget, because, like I say, soccer is my life. And I, I started playing soccer when I was about nine years old in high school. And now I'm in my 70s and, and I, I, I kick with the boys once in a while, but running the club and managing the team, that, that I would never give up till the day I die. Whoa, okay. And, and I, know, I know Ken and Stones and Fitzroy, it's four of us running the club right now. And we all played for West Indies and we okay. still- Goalkeeper Fitzroy? Fitz, yes. The four of us have been running the club for the last 10, 15 years. And it's, it's working? It's working for yes. on your objectives? Oh, yes. And we have, 
We have a Masters League team, and even in, in, in I, don't, I don't know if I should have said this publicly, but in the lockdown, we ended up in um, Pickering. We were up at Dunbarton playing, playing practice games against Magic. We play against Barbados. We play against a lot of teams up there. But so because of so, the, so is, there, is there no room to, for a youth program anymore, or how is that working? Or it take, yeah. take too much? No, well, what we're looking at right now is when the lockdown eases, we have discussed getting back into younger organized soccer. Because West Indies will always go on. Will always. You know, I, it, it's sad to see Irie not around anymore. Yeah. Barbados is still around because Barbados plays in the Old Boys League too. But West Indies will always be there. And if everything goes well, we will put another team back in the TND because the kids that I brought up to under 21, mm -hmm. they're still together. There's about 17 of them that still play together as a group. So at some point in, in the future, well, those kids are about 26 now, 25, 26, 27. So hopefully in, at some point in the future, I may link up with them and see if we get we can get West Indies going again, possibly in the TNB. Well, bugs like you have the bug. They, they, it's this. It, it's no pun intended, but I would say bugs like you have the bug like me about this sport and uh, but at uh, different things. I just accept the fact that I need to kind of promote it and help where I can. Well, if I can tell you this, my friend, you're doing a wonderful, wonderful job, man. The job you do right now is irreplaceable. Thank you. In spreading the word about the, the development and the evolution of Caribbean soccer in Canada and in the Caribbean. And I, I do appreciate the work you do. Thanks. Um, well, we, we it, it's something, it, it's a collaborative effort because um, without you guys, and, and it, it is something positive now, the fact that you intend to go till to the end, you know, yes. and um, mm. how do you counteract difficulties or challenges and stuff, or, or in life we do have challenges and stuff, is it the committee members softening that blow or are you work things out? Yes, the, the committee that we have, we're, we're brothers, <clears throat> brothers for life. And, you know, it's something that we have talked about as a group consistently and our pledge is West Indies for life. That's good. That's good to hear that, folks. Because it's it's not just words. Because if you look at your the, your um, track record, it's really you know right now you're going to the top because that's a dedication and the fact that you're saying you're going to the end with it. I, uh, that's on parallel right now. Well, it's not just me. You know, the, the committee that we have is is solid. Very solid. And and we have stuck with it. And at this point in time, I don't see any of us giving up. And you say you're the president of West Indies. Yes. I, okay. So, so what's, let, the, let me, what, what's the titles of the, the governing body? Yeah. Let me clarify that. The way we operate, on paper, I'm the president. And, and in, in certain events, I'm the president. But we are all presidents. We operate as four brothers, <clears throat> but for anything official, I am the president. And at another light, Billy Jack could be the president. Our stones could be the president. That's how we work. You know, like if, if you couldn't find me, you could have interviewed Billy Jack as a representative. And, and the information would, would be close to the same because BJ has been in West Indies from the 70s. Yeah, I remember. And, 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 and we can do Billy Jack, official name is? Ken Brown. Ken Brown. Yes. So, um, Stone is such, I know it's Stone is such. Well, Stone's came out, don't forget, Stone's played for Irie. Well, uh, I'm gonna do Stone because Stone is very universal and his dedication and everything stays the same. He, he went from 
operation to operation and regimes to regime and yes. still give the same amount. Yes. So it's no, it's, there's no biases or anything. It's just that he's focused on the job at hand. Yes, definitely. So, so, so I consider him very professional when it comes definitely. to that. Well, well, to be honest with you, without the two of them, there would be no West Indies because I couldn't do it alone. You know, it, it, it's a joint effort, a joint effort, a joint desire, a joint will to, to keep the, the legacy moving forward. And, and so far, you know, I, I have to give both of them and Fitzroy a shout out because the, 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 com the committee we have, Midget, is it's solid, solid, solid. Yeah. And, and we'll continue to work together. So, so with, um, well, that's the, so with a type of committee and foundation as West Indies, I came and covered the league and that's going to be part that I'm going, but right now I'm doing foundation, foundation, back where okay. it all started, right? So I'm mm -hmm. going to do the league a little later on. Um, but with your type of foundation and being there early, the first in, in Caribbean football in, in Toronto, I would think the... The, the Caribbean Masters League have a strong pillar to lean on. Now, now how many teams are there and, and what type of contribution? I know each team is represented, right? Um, yeah. how, how do you look at the structure of that league, the Mellow Masters? Not the Mellow, but the um, Caribbean, Caribbean. Caribbean Well, there, there, there's 12 teams. Last, last time we played, we had 12 teams. And there was a management committee where each team had a representative or an alternate. And there was an executive committee of five people, uh, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and um, league administrator. I, I am in that league. I took a position about two, three years ago as director of discipline. And at this point in time, I still hold that position with the Masters League. Because um, I know there's some unique rules about taking away points or whatever for cards and certain things. No, like that. That, that, that we have changed. We changed that. Okay, that's that's gone. But it's discipline in terms of infractions, um, violent conduct, fighting, and stuff like that. Whatever, whatever type of discipline come up. I myself and a gentleman named Derek Melvin. Mm -hmm. And Arville Grant fr from Magic. Bully? Bully, Bully yes. Bully. We found the discipline committee, mm -hmm. of which I'm the president. Mm -hmm. But the league, the structure of the league is solid. And that league has been around for quite a while, as you know. The only thing stopping us now is this Corona 19, mm -hmm. COVID, COVID, you know. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to the league again next year or this year, we, we, we still have our team. And we, we still train. We can't train now because it's cold. But once the weather gets good again, we have about 20 players right now. And some of them, mm. about 10 of them are new players. So we'll be ready. And, and we have another group that we may want to link up with, with younger players, which we, this is where we were thinking of putting back a team into the TND. Once you maintain a certain standard in your club, People want to come to it regardless. True, that's true. You know, and over the years we have been more Trinidadian and Jamaican than any other Caribbean island. You know, but we we welcome anybody from the Caribbean. Anybody. Yeah, as I was telling um Sam here, it, it in my heart I always felt a little jilted that I couldn't really finish that season in '77 with the Premier Division. Yes, yes. Again, injured, man. Yes, again, I remember and, this. And this on the league, and um, I remember. I, tried, I, I was thinking of coming back when at Leacock because it's just something I wanted to do. But then I got the the magic bug. True, and, true. And magic had a good social, so yes, yes. You know, and I don't want to be perceived as jumping here and jumping here because at that stage now it's not about winning and losing; it's about social. Yes. Yes. You know, and uh, but once you were there and Laza was there, Laza is one I always wanted to play with too. Yes. Even if we had 90, you know, <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> no, honestly, um, you know, because I find him a very good user of the ball. 
Yes. A good use of the ball. You master that ball. You're not too bad yourself. Yeah. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> them, I need guys like Lazar on them, no? <laughs> you know. You, 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 and, you and Tony alone, you give me a couple of the X, man. <laughs> yeah, but you just stop it abruptly, though. <laughs> That's not your ball. No, I tell you, Major the job you do, man, is marvelous. Marvelous job, man. Just, you know, don't stop it. Just keep it up. Yeah, well, once you guys stay leading, uh, I would follow. I would follow to see what you're doing and report on what you're doing. Yes, we'll be here. I, I, I promise you that. We'll be here. Right. So, Bugs, I want to thank you for giving me the information and for the time, and I wish you good health and to stay, stay safe. Same to you, my friend. Same to you. All right. You take care. Thanks for the opportunity. No problem. All right. Okay. All right. Yes. Yeah.